Well, again, you saw in that video how the trooper opened fire. He had a choice to make about what uh, Mr. Jones was doing when he reached into his SUV and whether or not he's legally culpable for it, whether or not the trooper thought that Mr. Jones had a gun. Jones did not have a gun. In that, in opening fire, the trooper chose wrong. With more on training police officers to make the right choices about deadly force, here's our Gary Tuckman. This Spokane, Washington police officer is getting wired so his brain and body functions can be monitored as he gets ready to make life or death decisions. Spokane Police! Police Department! Hey, hey! Talk to me! Talk to the door! Decisions in a most unique laboratory. What are you doing? Hey, let me see. Corporal Jordan Ferguson is one of many police officers, military members, and civilians who have volunteered time in this violence confrontation lab, complete with frighteningly realistic actors on a huge virtual reality screen. You receive a call from a person who says a convenience store is being robbed. Do you understand? Yes. Stand by. Hey! Hey! Back up! Back up! Back up! Put your hands up! Put your hands up! Drop the knife right now! Drop it! While the volunteers make split second decisions, brain waves and heart rates are checked. It's all part of an ambitious research project at Washington State University, partly funded by the Defense Department, with the goal of improving justice in America. Professor Brian Vila is the man in charge. We don't know yet, still, a hundred and some years since Teddy Roosevelt had the first police firearms training in New York. Uh, we still don't know whether there's a connection between the training we give police officers and their performance in a combat situation. Sergeant Terry Preninger is told he has pulled over a stolen car. Hey, sir, can I see your driver's license, your vehicle registration, and your proof of insurance? Please? Yeah, you want my driver's license? I do. Hey, you guys. Thank you. <laughs> oh. The researchers say these volunteers' hearts are generally racing because it's also realistic. Drop the gun. Many findings from the study will be released by the end of the year, but some have already been published. The research is declaring that volunteers of all races often view African American suspects as more threatening than white suspects, but that they may have subconsciously overcompensated because of that bias. The surprise was that they were more restrained in shooting. African Americans than they were whites. Police officer, let me see your hands. You at the counter, let me see your hands. Don't move. No! Stop, stop! The officer never knew if the man had a gun, but did not shoot. Sometimes we don't know if we made the right decision or the wrong decision. We make a decision and then we live with it for the rest of our lives. Novices are also used as volunteers, so with the cops guiding me, I pull over a suspicious car with a broken tail light. Hello there, sir. Your tail light's broken. Do you know that? Hey, sir, sir, take, take your hands out of your pockets, sir, 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 take your hands out of your pockets, sir, sir, put your hands on the steering wheel, sir, hey, sir, you're not listening, hands on the, okay, thank you, yeah, and that guy looked like he was getting a gun out, so I took the gun out, didn't point it at him, proper way to deal with it, exactly, hey, stop, stop, Please. there is a lot more to learn as these researchers try to make life safer for citizens and for the cops who serve them. Gary Tuckman, CNN, Spokane, Washington. Tough decisions to make.